You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Mori and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. Hi again, everyone. We start things, as always, with OSU men's basketball coach Mike Boynton. Let's go back to Bedlam first because that was so much fun. The atmosphere was great. Defensively, so many good things, and you were able to get a lot of production in the paint. But that's one of those wins that even though you were unable to follow it up with a victory at TCU, you get some momentum out of that long term, don't you? Oh, there's no doubt. And I was most proud of our guys for, for meeting the moment. Um, there was a lot at stake, obviously, you know, we had been playing okay, coming off a tough road loss where you feel like you should have won the game. So the dejectedness of a, a late game loss and the late travel back and, and all that was going on. Then you add Bedlam and Remember the 10 on top of that. Uh, and so for our guys to respond the way they did, you know, certainly was uh, gratifying. I'm glad we were able to come out with a win. And the way we won was uh, playing you know, good old-fashioned, hard-nosed man-to-man defense. Well, no doubt about that. In fact, Oklahoma had its second-worst shooting game of the year. You know, the atmosphere was terrific. I don't know about you, when it was announced as an 11 a.m. tip, there was a little anxiety about what the crowd might be like, and with the students rolled out of bed, well, we should have known they would, and they did. It was good. The crowd was sensational. Uh, one of our best, if not our best crowd all year. I uh, was really thankful of their commitment and uh, understanding our team at that point really needed them. We needed that boost, uh, that energy from the crowd. Obviously, it's been a, a difficult year psychologically for these guys to stay focused on the things uh, that make us successful as a group. Uh, but time and time again, our fans have been there and responded the right way. And I'm certainly thankful for all their commitment. The, the, the loyal and true is a real thing here. And uh, we're certainly grateful for it. You know, you look at the last five games offensively. You've shot a collective 48% from the field. We've talked some about this, but as you continue to see it happen, what are some of the key dynamics and what are some new dynamics that maybe have come into the equation? For example, Isaac Likely had 19 points at TCU. What, what's going on? Just being a little bit more aggressive in transition, but valuing the ball. Even against TCU in a loss, we only had 11 turnovers. Mm -hmm. And so giving ourselves a chance to get good shots is, is a big part of that. And then – you know, making sure we're getting the right guys, the right shots at the right time. And, and so with Bryce Thompson and Avery Anderson both coming on offensively in terms of outside shooting, we've been playing you know, through those guys. Uh, Keelan Boone, not as consistent, but when he makes shots, certainly makes a difference for us. And it was certainly good to see Caleb Boone get going in the Bedlam game. And so we need to just continue to build on that. Our offensive flow has gotten better. It's the defensive side where we've got to continue to – to harp on and get back to doing those things more consistently. You know, Bryce Thompson probably has had the best, just in terms of point production, extended run of anyone on your team, probably all year when you look at consecutive games and double figures, for example. How much does that, and it looks like he's becoming a bit of a focal point, how much does that help things offensively? Again, going back to what Likely did against TCU. Uh, it helps tremendously to have a guy who we know when we need a basket, we can run something through. Not necessarily for him to take the shot, but for him to draw the attention of the defense and maybe create an opportunity for somebody else. But he's got an aggressive scorer's mindset. Uh, we need him to have that aggressive scorer's mindset. And we'll continue to try to put him in positions to, to score points for us because, again, it makes the game easier for everybody else. Uh, and it makes him a little bit more valuable as a playmaker for other guys. I try to make sure I don't take it for granted. He makes some hard shots and he makes it look easy he does uh, one of the things is he knows where his sweet spots are and he's pretty aggressive getting to those spots and then getting under control and getting some good elevation where even when it's challenged he still has a pretty good uh, view of the rim and can finish it and it goes to his work he works at it every single day he's one of the hardest working kids i've ever been around uh, I'm thankful he's here, and I, I know that we look forward to continuing to build on what he's done this year as we move forward into the future seasons. You talked about the defense you played against OU. Unfortunately, in some recent games, the performances maybe haven't been quite as good as they'd been in some previous games, but you also mentioned the need to play a little faster. So how do you balance the two, the need to play fast, with the need probably to get back to the defensive consistency you had earlier in the year. Yeah, that was one of the things that we talked about going into the TCU game was trying to create that tempo more. Problem is we didn't get back in transition yeah. multiple times and gave up easy baskets. And when you talk about a, 
a two possession game, really a one possession game, every possession matters in terms of getting your defense set. We had a stretch there where we held them, I think we went on a 13-0 run to kind of bring ourselves right back uh, within one late. And, um, you know, we just got to do it a little bit more consistently, but with in mind that our best offense is in the first seven, eight seconds of the shot clock. And so we got to create one shot for the, for the defense, rebound it or force a turnover, get out, make easy plays for our teammates. We've got to share the ball consistently better and then take open shots to make them. And the thing is, you've had some great stretches defensively, even in conference play. For example, in six of your 11 conference games, you've held the opponent scoreless for four minutes or more over a stretch. I mean, I remember Texas, we didn't score in almost 11 minutes on their court. TCU the other night down the stretch, you make that comeback because you held them scoreless for more than four minutes. You know, is that a mindset that you've kind of created with your team in terms of, hey, let's not just get a stop, let's get a bunch of stops? Yeah, it's, um, it's a part of the fabric of what we've tried to build here. Uh, we've got to continue to evolve offensively, no doubt. But the core of who we're going to be is a defensive first program. And even the Kansas game, the best offensive team in our league, when they played here, I think we held them for 10 minutes. You did. Without, without scoring a point. Now, the problem is our offense at that time wasn't as good as it is now. Otherwise, we would have had a lead, uh, probably a, a, a close to double-digit lead at halftime of that game. And so you just got to balance the improvement that you're seeing with the understanding of the improvement that's still necessary for your team to have success long term. What do you see in West Virginia recently? A close loss at Baylor, a game they could have probably won, a close loss at home to Texas Tech, and then a dominating victory over Iowa State. What's going on with them? Uh, just a lot of in and out of personnel. You know, Coach Huggins, a Hall of Fame coach, knows what he's doing. He's got two dynamic scorers in Taz Sherman and Sean, and, uh, Sean McNeil. They run things through them. And then always the physical presence, specifically on the glass, is something you got to prepare for. And so as we get ready over the next couple of days to go to battle with them, that'll be a point of emphasis, Make, making sure that we take care of our defensive backboard and then making it difficult for Sherman and McNeil to get open, clean looks from three. Is that the, the rebounding and the physicality? Is that the change in game personality that needs to occur that would be most significant compared to the game you lost in Morgantown 70 to 60 back in mid-January? Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, they were just physically more um, uh, aggressive than we were, particularly rebounding-wise. Uh, we had way too many turnovers. We missed layups at the rim because we didn't attack with an aggressive mindset. And so that's certainly something we have to be ready for because, you know, the, the, the word is out that that's maybe a way you can attack us is on the interior. And uh, we got to find a way to, to cast that demon aside. Stay with us. We talk Cowgirl basketball with Coach Jim Littell when we return. Hello, sweet babies. Welcome to your new home. You have changed our life and you may even change the world. And because of you, 2021 is the best year ever. Mercy has helped moms deliver babies for nearly 200 years. To find out how to welcome your baby at Mercy, visit mercy.net slash OSU mom. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, bikes for the whole family are just a click away. Buy online at academy.com with our free in-store assembly. Your next set of wheels plus helmets, pads, and water bottles will be waiting for you at our in-store pickup counter. Get to the fun faster with our in-store pickup and free assembly at Academy Sports and Outdoors. When we made the decision that we were going to build the Durant Solar Farm, we had the idea of an anchor tenant, and the first one that we thought about was the Choctaw Nation. It was a perfect fit for us whenever og &E approached us about this relationship and this idea. They reflect a lot of our same values. They're about growth of our communities. They're about growth of our state. They're trying to help us preserve Oklahoma, our heritage here in the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. 
Thanks and welcome along Casey Kendrick now with uh, coach Jim Littell and coach uh, coming off a, a couple of games this last week and you know before we get and delved into these games you know we've talked about this a lot but the psychology of the game is to continue to work hard to play hard and, and let the results take care of themselves and a sign of a team that truly has kept that in check and in perspective is one that goes out and delivers and continues to do that. And that is what we've seen from your team. Despite where you guys have been some points in the records this year, your kids have continued to fight, continue to get better, and that's always a mark of a program that's moving forward. I agree, and, and our, our group has had some tough times and, and uh, had some losses where we were in the ball game the entire way. and. Uh, had lapses of eight-minute runs, nine-minute runs that uh, put us behind. But our kids continue to fight. We see improvement. Uh, we practice well. And that's what we're ultimately looking for is, is to stick to the process, make sure we're getting better each day as an individual and a team. And down the road, the, the wins will equate. Well, and Coach, it's interesting. At this point in the year, halfway through the Big 12 conference season, I can usually look at your rotation and go, okay, there's the, the projected starting five, 95%, they'll be on the floor. Here's the two or three kids that are come off the bench because you've played, you had the continuity, and you know. Well, you guys finally have just now started the same four or five kids, five kids, because they have been available, because they weren't. And again, everybody's going through it, but you're still, your rotation is still different than it was, and it's still... As hard as it is to believe, because of the kind of year it is for a lot of coaches, a lot of teams, you're still trying to figure out the starting lineup, the rotation, and it's just now starting to come into place. Well, it's been a challenge. Uh, you know, a lot of programs, when COVID hit, they got uh, eight kids at the same time. They battled through it, got over it. We've had two here, two here, two here. So that uh, that explains the different combinations and also how you play people off the bench. And again, we've seen that in that rotation, but now it's starting to come into, into picture a little bit. I mean, we're seeing some kids maybe getting some chances that they, they didn't early on again because they weren't available. Some kids are starting to take a hold of those opportunities. And, and in particular, a kid like Micah Dennis. I mean, she's now starting the point. She has, uh, I think the reason she solidified that spot, at least for now, has been not because she's been so great as much as she has just been able to understand what you've asked her to do and do that more than trying to go out there and score 25 points a game. Well, we had a talk with Micah just to simplify your game. You play great defense. You're always going to guard one of the better players on the other team. I think she's an elite defender and works really hard and is knowledgeable on the defensive end. We've just asked her, hey, initiate the offense, facilitate what we're trying to do, play without turnovers, push the basketball, and then step up and hit open shots. Again, you don't have to score 20 points, but you've got to play without turnovers and you've got to run the offense. Well, and let's go to Ames, Iowa. That was the first one this last week. Coach, she was, I think, four of eight in that ball game. had some assists, and um, started to, to kind of really, again, seem to settle in in that starting position. And we knew going up there it's the toughest place to play in the conference. Hilton Coliseum is terrific. Great fan base there. And that, uh, that again, is a very good Iowa State program. It's a great team. They score in five different positions. They're very well coached. Uh, it's a group that uh, all of their starters return after last year, and then they've added some people through recruitment. And uh, Difficult place to play. They get hot there. My biggest fear was that they'd come out and jump on us, and they got 28 in the first quarter. And then after that, our kids virtually played them pretty tight. And we've seen that a lot from your team. Uh, just uh, three quarters really good. It's either been kind of the, the first quarter or the last quarter. So, and that was the second of two on the road. And again, just a, a tough ball game. Um, so now you wonder, well, what's this team going to look like at home in a winnable ball game against a team they only lost by by one the first time around, and then they got Texas Tech coming up. And this goes back to how I opened uh, the, the segment here. How would you f handle that? How do you handle against a team that's really struggling too, that barely beat you before on their home floor? How do you respond? Well, your, answer, your kids definitely answered that question. Well, they did respond, and, and uh, I thought we got a lot of really good looks in the first half and, and didn't make shots. We overloaded the zone a little bit and had shots out of the corner. The ball didn't go in, but we had a play right before half where 
Lexi Keys hit one at the buzzer and thought that was good for the momentum of the game. And before I know it, we come out and blow a 7-0 lead, and it's, <laughs> we're down by two. But our kids hung in there, and for the most part, it was uh, the most complete game we've played uh, for the entire year. Well, and let's go back in, in Fort Worth, Coach. You had a team that came out and went on a 6-0 run, uh, I think, to start the ball game down there, and you opened up a 14-point lead, and it got away from you there. This time, they evaporated the lead, but then your kids settled right back in and, and not only settled in, but got really, really good on the offensive end. You know, uh, we talked about before the game, instead of running plays, let's play. And uh, I thought we played a lot more free. Our kids were comfortable. Instead of running plays, it was penetrate, try to get to the rim, find somebody on the backside. And uh, it was fun, especially in the fourth quarter. We scored 29 points, and our kids uh, had an ease about them. And... Uh, we made shots. We saw some kids uh, like Macy James hit eight consecutive points. Lowe had a big ball game. Tay got going in the fourth. So, uh, you know, it's just something we need to build on as we go into the next games. Well, and I guess go to Lowe for a minute, Coach. Again, she has kind of carried this team this year. She's averaging 25 and a half points per ball game against TCU. She had 26 the first time, 25 uh, on uh, Wednesday night this week. And, Again, there was, there's just something about when she's letting the ball go right now, at least against TCU. Maybe it's that zone. Maybe they give her enough to, uh, room and space to operate. But when she lets it fly, unlike many times uh, throughout the course of the season, you just get a look at her face, and she knows it's going in. Uh, it is a confident stroke. Uh, you know, there wasn't any hesitation, and that's how we've been trying to get our kids to play. And I thought there were even a couple more opportunities that she could let fly, and same with Lexi Keys. So uh, pop your feet, get ready, and, and let it go. Well, and then going back to Micah Dennis, three for three in this ball game. She's now seven of or yeah, seven of eleven over the last couple of ball games. Seven assists, only two turnovers. So three and a half to one there. I mean, you'll take that ratio. She uh, she had some rebounds. I mean, again, very good effort in doing what you've asked your point guard to do. Absolutely, and and also a big key of the game is uh, she held Lauren. Erd to two points. Erd's one of the most established and experienced guards in this league. She's in her fifth year, a, a grad player, and uh, she held her one for nine, and, and she didn't score in the second half. So that's, that's what gives you an opportunity to win when you take away the best player on the other team. Well, and the other thing, too, Coach, again, I thought Cassidy Delap was very active on the uh, defensive end, certainly, and didn't necessarily go, you know, light it up on the offensive side. But, you know, as you mentioned, Taylor Collins got 14 points. So you had that offense-defense com combination with your four and five, which really honestly has been missing for a while. We, we told them to do one thing, focus on rebounding, and your points will take care of itself. And, and I think that's what happened. Uh, both of them went to the glass hard. Uh, Cassidy really in the first half, and, and Tay went and got a lot of rebounds in the second half and just created uh, new possessions for our team. First time you played uh, TCU, you fouled, put them on the line 21 times. In the game, second time around, Gallagher-Iba, a couple of things that were pretty amazing to have 13 less opportunities from the free throw line, which they did. They only went eight times. And then the, the fact that you did not foul for the first 27 minutes of the game. I don't know that I've ever seen any team go 27 minutes without committing a foul. That, that was phenomenal on the defensive end and a great turnaround from game one. We never foul. It's just for 40 <laughs> minutes, we never foul. Just sometimes they feel like they got to call it. No, but it, I, I haven't seen that either. And, and uh, for teams that are challenged to score sometimes like we've been, it's just crucial that you keep people off the, the free throw line. We changed up how we guarded. Uh, we, we changed how we guarded on ball screens and uh, just decided to make people hit perimeter shots, keep them out of the lane as much as possible and love to do that every time out is just keep people off the free throw line. Well, that decision led to a 76-47 win and now coach only one game this week. You got to miss a game Saturday midweek by and uh, because they moved the Kansas game earlier, so that kind of opened up the schedules. So let's talk about this. Texas Tech, a team that you guys have already faced once before. That's where you got your first win on the road. Um, and, heck, the TCU game was your first win at home. So now a chance. You got a little momentum, and you got a chance to sweep Texas Tech. Obviously, the emotion of, of Texas Tech and the rivalry that this has become, 
It's a big game on Saturday. It is a huge game for us, and, and uh, you know, we can continue to build these young players and build their confidence level, and we'd love to have a big crowd come in, and, uh, you know, we've uh, – uh, purchased tickets. I've purchased tickets that uh, they could get at the TV station at Hawks. I'm going to put some down at Cowboy Corner. So anybody that wants a free ticket, uh, we would love to have a huge crowd in here and and our kids feed off of it. And uh, I think we'll play well. Well, and again, there has been a huge emphasis in this game. It is a dollar ticket, right? It's a dollar ticket, so you can bring as many as you want. And, heck, if that's still uh, – you want some free tickets, want to bring along a lot of friends, as you mentioned, you purchased a, a lot of tickets and, uh, and made those available. So that just tells me, again, we need some fans in there. 4,500, 3,500 would really change the whole dynamic of that ball game. I agree. You know, uh, Gallagher gets loud. If we can fill a lot of the, the bottom bowl, it would really help our, our players. And we need to play in those type of atmospheres as a young team and learn what it's about and uh, really believe our players would feed off of that and encourage people, the ones that have come, bring, bring a friend, bring a couple friends. And let's get as many people in there as possible. Well, and back-to-back -back wins, again, going through now the second half of the season, try to move up as you head into the Big 12 play and tournament coming up. Um, all of those reasons are why this is a big game. But, Coach, it's obviously an emotional game as well. And, you know, just for whatever reason, just because of logistics of several things over the last several years, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, that's that's rival rivalry, right? It's getting up there, let me put it that way, with Oklahoma. I mean, it's not Oklahoma, it's not Bedlam, but – Boy, it sure is close. No, it's not Bedlam. Nothing. There's nothing like Bedlam, but uh, it isn't far off. <laughs> it's right there. Coming up 7 o'clock on uh, Sunday. Coach should be, a, or excuse me, on Saturday should be a fun one. And uh, looking forward to it. Best of luck. I appreciate it. All right. And with that, we're going to say so long. want to say thanks to Coach Jim Littell and everybody else here on the show. Have yourself a great week. We'll see you back here next time for the Orange Power Podcast. <laughs>